Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. Welcome to part 8 of the ephemera making for junk journals. I will have a link down below of all of the other videos that I've done in this series. Today we will be making these corner pocket flip ups. So I'm going to show you what they are, how I use them in a journal and then we will go and make some. I saw this idea from Yvonne Preston years and years ago and I have been using it ever since because I think it's so beautiful and effective in a journal. So the way that I like to use them is on the first page of my journal. You can use them all throughout if you wish. Um, so basically what it is, it's a pocket. So you have little things in there that you want to put in. Usually I will have one of these a note to the bookmaker letters. There are many different ones, uh, different versions floating around. The one that I use is from Jibbed Neary. You can go to her website, which I'll link down below, and you can find the letter in the freebies section. So I like to have that in there. Just explains what a junk journal is and how you can use it. So it's a pocket and then also it's a flip up. And you can use this for journaling. You can use it for writing notes or to write a little note to the person you're giving the journal to, whatever. So that's the, that's the idea. It's a pocket, it's a beautiful embellishment, and it's a place to journal as well. And now I think we should head into making some. Okay, so these are the things you're going to need, apart from, you know, a ruler and scissors and that sort of stuff. So you want a paper. You can use, I'm going to use tea dyed paper. This, this paper here I dyed with um, Easter egg color. So uh, you can use white paper, you can use scrapbook paper, whatever you want. I was thinking of maybe using some book pages as well, but the problem is um, there's no space to write. So if you back it onto a tea dyed paper, then it might, might work. But you want the inner side of the, of the little pocket, the inside, you want it to be you know, space for writing. So uh, you want it to be clear, basically. So I'm not going to do the book pages today, but you can use really whatever you think is going to look nice. Okay, so we need paper, we need uh, some doilies. So I have, these are the larger size, but more of a standard size doily. Uh, the best thing to use would be a smaller doily like this, but you can use the larger ones as well, and I'll show you how. And then I use a little bit of this eyelash, eyelash trim. Um, some of this stuff makes it, you know, so it's peeking out from underneath, you can see here. And then embellishments, so, you know, little flowers or whatever you want to use as your focal point. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we need squares. So we need perfect squares. And I wrote here three and a half inches, in, you know, usually around about the ones that I've got are about three and a half inches or four inches. So uh, it doesn't matter what size of, of a square you have, but the larger the square, the larger the pocket. So you just have to think about how big your pages are. So the standard one is that measurement here, and that's what I'll do today. Uh, the only thing is you want your squares to be a perfect square. So you don't want to have, you know, uh, one size larger because then when you fold them in half, um, they're not going to be equal on both sides. All right, so I'm just going to measure, I'm going to do four inches this time, and I'm going to use this paper. It's been scrunched up. I don't mind it. I'm just going to use this. All right, so I'm going to mark four inches. Okay, so I've got my paper trimmer, and I just put a scrap piece of paper underneath um, because my paper trimmer is very blunt. So now I'm going to, as you can see here, I've marked four inches here, and then the next one is four inches, and then the last one is smaller than four inches. So um, let's do the four inches first. So I'm going to cut this, make sure it's nice and straight. So these are the four inch ones, and uh, this one's smaller, so I will come back to that. So now I want to cut them in half, make sure that they are four inches, four inch squares. So let's see here, I've already marked four inches on this one. And now for the second one, another four inches. So I'll just have a little bit of uh, an off cut that I don't need. And I'm going to do the same for this one here. Okay. 
Okay, so these are my four inch squares. And now this one here, first I'm going to measure exactly how, uh, exactly the size of it. So let's have a look. This one is three inch, just over three and a half inches. So that's exactly how much I'm going to mark over here because I want perfect squares. Okay, so your paper now is cut. I have some larger squares and some smaller squares. So I don't think I'm going to do all of this today because I want to get it done as quickly as possible. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to fold in half, obviously not into a rectangle, but into a triangle. And now you really want to try and make sure that all of your points meet up perfectly. So let's have a look at this one. It's perfect. So they all meet up perfectly. So that's one. This is here just for inspiration. And now I'm going to do the smaller one. And I'm hoping this one isn't a perfect square. So then I can show you how you can fix it if you if your measurements were a little bit off. So it's pretty good, this one. So I'm just going to do one. Now I'm just going to show you some troubleshooting. So let's say you have a little square and it's not a perfect square. So still you want to meet up the middle points, uh, the middle, that middle point. You want them to meet up perfectly. And then what's going to happen is this. You'll have some extra uh, piece of paper here and extra on the other side and what you will do is simply trim the extras off and you'll end up with a perfect square so that's just a little bit of troubleshooting if you get the measurements wrong you can still just cut the um, the excess off all right the next step we want to do is totally optional but I like to round this corner because I like it but you don't have to do that so I'm just gonna get my corner rounder and just round that middle point one thing I forgot to write down right here is I like to ink the edges so the reason why I like to ink the edges is because it gives a definition and just makes a pop on a page so you can see I've already inked one and it just looks nice on the page because it gives it some definition, you know. And I only ink one side and I'm not being too precious with it or too perfect. So I will have some areas of, you know, a lot more ink than others. And I only do the one side because the other side is going to be glued onto the page and you won't be able to see it anyway. Um, if you want you can go the extra step and you can ink the inside as well so once this opens up then you can ink these edges here as well I don't because uh, it's just a lot more work but I usually just ink the, fr uh, the very top page or side rather all right so now that we've done that the next thing we're going to do is we need to glue on the doily all right, so first of all, if you've got these small doilies, perfect. I've got two here. As you will see, they fit perfectly. The size fits perfectly onto these little pockets. If, however, you have only these larger ones, so that what, then what you will do is, obviously, this is too large, so you can just maneuver it upwards and then use it like this. So just use that part. So I, what I'm, I'll just use this large one first and then we'll use the smaller one. Okay, so now I have made sure that everything looks nice and even on both sides, symmetrical. And then of course I'm not going to waste the whole doily. So I just trim this off. And then I keep this for the next one. And then I fold it down and you can see that because this is a large doily it's sticking out so I'll just simply trim that those two bits off like that so I will use the large doily on this one and then the smaller doily once again you you put it on and then 
cut it because you don't want to be wasting your doilies and then just fold down over the top the next thing will be the next step will be gluing it down and then this one here So if you have larger pockets and smaller doilies, you don't have to, you won't be needing to trim these little bits that are sticking out. It all depends on what size pocket and what size doily you have, but you can make it work. So now we want to glue the doily onto the pocket. I'll just protect my desk with this book page and then I use, so first I'm just going to apply a little bit of glue on the back here. I just use use whatever glue you've got it really doesn't matter as long as it's gluing it down so I will also use this glue because it's quick drying and I just apply a little bit and here we go a little bit of glue and then I'm gonna just apply a little bit of glue here and there on the doily because I like the doily to be stuck down it doesn't have to be not a, every tiny little part of the doily has to be stuck down but the main parts you know so I can see my little fold there and then I just maybe move it around a bit make sure it's you want this to be snug and you want the back to be glued down because this is a pocket you'll be putting things in and out so you want that part to be glued down at the back all right, I'm going to do the other two now. So I don't use the glue stick all over the doily because obviously it's got these little fragile bits and, you know, dragging the glue stick over those can very easily rip your doily. So that's why I use um, both really. I use the glue stick just on that part where there's no little cuts. Okay, so now I have my doily glued on. This is here for inspiration again. And the next thing that we're going to do is add a little bit of eyelash trim. So this, of course, also is optional. The doily is optional too. You can just have a, a naked piece of paper, really. You can just put a little sticker on it, nothing special. But this is just the way that I like to make them. So I have a little bit of um, a trim. And then I don't measure, of course, I just kind of cut a little piece and then wrap it around my fingers like so. So then I get this round little hairy little bit like that. And then what I do is I just apply a little bit of glue. You can use PVA glue, whatever glue you have. I don't think a glue stick is going to hold it down. But I just apply a little bit of glue in a circular motion right in the middle of my a little flip up pocket and then just put the eyelash down I don't worry too much about making sure that it's all glued down because I have a flower coming next so that's gonna make sure everything is in place all right so the next one again I will apply some glue somewhere around the middle wrap it around just like that and then pop it on I don't worry too much about how it's looking yet but what I try to do is see the ends these two ends here I like to have them somewhere in the middle so that they're not sticking out so I'll show you how it's looking see these little this little end here I like to have it somewhere in the middle there so that it's not sticking out but if it is it's no big deal anyway it's going to look good once you have your focal point so the next thing we're going to do i like to add a flower you can use other any other focal point you want die cuts anything that you want to put on there buttons whatever just keep in mind you know you don't want anything too thick too dimensional because then it becomes hard to write on the page all right so i admit i'm a bit of a flower maniac i have these two boxes full of flowers these ones here are from those cheap Hawaiian um, necklace things, so they look quite nice. So I'm just going to now try and layer some flowers and make sure that it's going to all look nice. You can even use little doilies like this, that's going to look even better. 
than the flowers. I really like that. But because I don't have a lot of these doilies, I tend to hoard them, so I'm not going to use them. I'm going to use these paper flowers that I've got. So I'm just layering up my little flowers, just getting them ready for the next step. Something like this looks cool, but it's uh, it's got this middle part and it's a bit too big. So I try and keep them as flat as possible. But I think um, use what you've got, you know. Don't go out buying things. If you don't have flowers, doesn't matter. You can use postage stamps. You can use die cuts, cutouts from scrapbook paper, anything. Okay, so I have just decided on what I'm going to use. And now what I like to do is add a brad. This one here, because my flower has already a little bling in the middle, I will not use a brad, uh, a brad. I will just glue it on. So I'll show you that option too if you don't actually have brads. All right, so let's do this one first. I have chosen three layers of different flowers and I'm thinking I want to ink this one just the ends of the petals just a little bit to make it stand out a little bit more because it kind of gets lost because it's a very light pink color. So now the next thing I do, I'm layering up my flowers one on top of the other. Make sure that they're centered and now I just want to put a brad through. I've chosen a little silver brad for this one here. That looks really cute. And I'm actually going to close the brad now. You could um, put it through this top piece of paper and then close it on the other side. The only thing is you will have the brad feet showing here and then kind of ruins the journaling space. And now I simply just glue the flower on. Okay, so I'm making sure that the flower is somewhat centered and that I have these little eyelash trim, little hairy pieces showing through. So um, I just press down hard and then usually I like to just put it under something heavy just for a little while. It's not necessary, but if you want it all to be nice and flat and stick down properly, then maybe that's an option. All right, let's do this one here. So I've got four flowers that I've chosen. I want to make sure they are nice and centered. Poke a hole right in the middle. And then put a brad through. And now, of course, add my glue. See, glue and put it on my flip up corner pocket. Here we go. That's quite a nice one. It always comes together and looks beautiful right at the end. So this one, because my flower already has a center, I'm not going to use a brad. The brad was mostly to hold it all together and to add the center to the flower, but I will not use a brad for this one. So what I do is I just simply have to glue all of my layers together. So add a little bit of glue, put my next flower on top, add a little bit more glue, and the next flower comes on top. And now I glue all three and then glue my flower on top. All right, let's find a page, any page, random page. Maybe this one. This one will do right over here. So let's say I want to use this one. And I want it to be here. And I want it to be a pocket. So what I do is I flip it over, grab my glue. I'm not actually going to glue it down, but you know, grab your glue, any glue you want, and then you apply. So this is your doily up here. Usually I put my thumb on the side I don't want to glue down. You don't want to glue down the top side because then it won't, won't be a pocket. So I have my thumb here and that's how I know. I just have to glue these two sides and I'm just applying a little bit of glue I'm pretending to, but just so you get the idea. And then I put it 
right there glue it down okay and then it's glued down and then this is still open to be a pocket and then because we only glued down the bottom part the top part can now it's not glued down so it's giving me trouble but we we're pretending right so the bottom part is glued down and the top part flips up and you have your little pocket here let me know what you guys think of this whole project it's a very easy simple thing to do I think the the thing that takes the longest amount of time is actually cutting the squares and making sure that they're all perfect squares um, but I think it's really nice to have a little stash happening and then when you're making your journals you don't have to think too much how to embellish you've got your box of stuff ready to go and you can just pull things out and apply to your pages so I will also link all of the videos the previous ephemera making videos that I've done so far and then you can you know make some and have a little box of ephemera ready to go all right so here are the instructions here we go an opportunity for a screenshot thank you so much for being here with me today as always i really appreciate you guys all of your comments i think we have such a wonderful community in general in this junk journal world so i love it so much thank you thank you thank you and i will see you in my next video bye